This $330 mid-tier mini PC rocking a two-year-old CPU outshines this $800 latest gen Ryzen 8000 in real world tasks. Ready to see it in action? Let's do this. Hey guys, CJ with Elevated Systems. Over the years, I've built hundreds of custom PCs for all sorts of users. And sure, some were flashy high-end gaming rigs, but most were simple, affordable home office workstations. I featured a bunch of these budget-friendly builds early on in the channel's history. And even with less than a thousand subscribers, those videos blew up getting thousands of views. It makes sense since most people just need a PC for basic stuff like home or remote office work, web browsing, streaming, and maybe some casual gaming between Zoom calls. For those tasks, you don't even need a dedicated graphics card, just a decent mid-range CPU with integrated graphics. So why haven't I showed one of these basic PC builds on the channel in over two years? It's because of the explosion of mini PCs on the market. I can't build a custom PC that matches their performance and efficiency in such a compact size or at the same price point. That's why recently I've been recommending mini PCs to anyone asking about building a basic desktop PC. But with so many mini PC brands and models out there, it's tough to know which ones are legit, reliable, and right for your needs. And that's where I try to help out. I reviewed several mini PCs from different companies. And today I'm checking out the Nookbox M6 from GMK Tech. In this video, I'll unbox this mini PC and see what it comes with, go over the M6 specs and features, test its raw computing and real world performance, check out its thermals and noise levels, and wrap up with my thoughts on the overall value of the Nookbox M6. Let's start by seeing the unboxing process. And popping the lid, we're greeted with the mini PC prominently displayed right on top. Pulling out the M6 from its protective cardboard and foam insert, we find a user's guide in what seems like every language on the planet, though it's pretty light on actual info. At the bottom, there's a box that includes the main power cable, an HDMI cable, and a VESA adapter for the mini PC. There's also another box containing the hefty 120 watt power brick. With everything unpacked, let's dive into the specs and features. The GMK Tech Nookbox M6 is an average size mini PC measuring 130 millimeters by 125 millimeters by 53 millimeters tall. The tiny chassis is made from injection molded ABS plastic and comes in a charcoal gray color with black steel side ventilation panels. It's accented with a fluorescent green power button and silver and green branding on the top panel. The Nookbox M6 is powered by an AMD Ryzen 5 6600H, a six core 12 thread Zen 3 Plus mobile processor with integrated RDNA based AMD Radeon 660M graphics. The version GMK Tech sent over has 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory, a one terabyte M.2 NVMe SSD with an additional M.2 slot for a second drive and a MediaTek Wi-Fi 6E Bluetooth 5.2 card. On the front of the PC, you'll find a power button, a headset jack, a full feature USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 type C port, and two 10 gigabit type A ports. On the back, there's a USB 2.0 type A port, a 10 gigabit type A port, a display port, and HDMI port, each porting up to 4K 60 hertz displays, two 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports, and the DC power input. Installing and setting up the M6 is as simple as it gets. I plugged in a keyboard, mouse, 4K 60Hz display, Ethernet, and the DC input. Powering the system on, I was immediately met with the Windows 11 setup. Two nice things here. First, the Windows setup didn't require a Microsoft account. You can simply create a local user profile. Second, the Windows installation didn't include any extra bloatware on top of the already bloated Windows operating system. I had everything up and running very quickly. However, in my communications with GMK Tech, they informed me that there were embedded controller and BIOS updates for this PC to resolve any fan issues with the current model. And yes, there were fan issues with this PC.
but we'll get to that in a bit. They provided download links and instructions for the upgrade process, and I did update the EC and BIOS eventually. First, I wanted to test the system before the updates to see if they actually fixed anything, and if they did, how did they do it? If the PC has heat and fan noise problems, one way to fix it is to nerf the CPU, sacrificing performance for efficiency. Also, before the update, I took a minute to check the BIOS. It's pretty limited apart from setting the default power profile and designating the dedicated graphics memory. There isn't much tuning you can do here. This wasn't changed after the BIOS update. With the system online, it was time to check out its performance. Before we jump into the data, it is worth noting that I'll be comparing this mini PC to some others I've recently reviewed to better understand its price to performance ratio and overall value. The charts will include results both pre and post firmware updates, and I'll be using the post update data for all the comparisons. Let's start by looking at the raw computing power of the Ryzen 5 6600H. In Cinebench 2024, the M6 has a single core score of 88, putting it just above the previous gen Ryzen 9 5900HX, but about 15% behind the latest gen Ryzen 9 8945HS and the 12th gen Intel CPU. In multi-core performance, it scored a 608, falling short of the 8-core Ryzen 8000. However, with mostly efficiency cores on board, which don't contribute much to this AVX heavy workload, the i7-1260P falls behind by 20%. The post-update multi-core performance get a very slight boost, initially indicating the CPU wasn't nerfed to reduce thermal load. Well, it was, but in a good way, I'll, I'll get to that. In Geekbench 6, the single core scores track with what we saw in Cinebench. However, in multi-core performance, the Intel CPU pulls ahead as its efficiency cores are given more work in this test. Looking at GPU compute performance, thanks to assistance from its onboard NPU, the Ryzen 8945HS crushes everything. With the least number of GPU cores, the M6's RDNA-based iGPU comes in last, just behind the Iris Xe graphics, but only 17 cent behind the older Vega iGPU, which is actually a pretty good result considering the 6600H has 25% fewer GPU cores. But let's move on to actual real-world workloads. In the Procyon Productivity Test, which measures the PC's ability to multitask in common office workloads using the Microsoft Office Suite, the big takeaway here is that the high-end Geekcom A8, costing more than double, only has a 13% edge over the mid-range Nook Box in intermediate level office multitasking, which is one of the main use cases for a mini PC like these. It's also notable that the Geekcom IT12 with an Intel CPU purpose-built for productivity work only has an 11% lead over the 40% cheaper M6, we also see that updating the M6 led to a higher, yet spoiler alert, quieter score. In the Puget Photoshop test, the M6 crushes the more expensive S500 and IT12 minis while falling 21% behind the newer and high-end A8. Here we see a more significant 5% gain after updating. Now, here's a surprise. In the Puget Premiere Pro video editing test, the Nookbox M6 bested them all, even outscoring the A8 by 16%. I ran these tests three times and it's not a fluke. It has to do with how GMK Tech fine-tuned the 6600H, but I'll get to that in a bit. You'll also notice that post-update, we get a significant performance boost. Knowing my audience, I can't review any PC without checking its gaming performance, so let's dive in and how it handles some less demanding and older AAA titles. Starting with pure 3D graphics performance in the 3D Mark Night Raid benchmark, RDNA-based Radeon 660M in the GMK Tech scored an 18,740. This is an above average score for this APU, coming in just 21% below the RDNA 3 based A8 and significantly higher than the older Vega graphics and the less capable Iris Xe iGPU. As we quickly go through the gaming results, you'll notice that the Nookbox M6 goes head to head with the $800 A8.
And the M6 is only 4% behind the A8 in the six games tested. This is largely because the A8 isn't very well tuned for gaming, whereas the M6 is finely tuned. So let's quickly talk about the tuning GMK Tech has done with the Nookbox M6, and I'll keep it brief and as non-techy as possible. From my testing, it seems that prior to the firmware update, the only real tuning they did was thermally capping the CPU at 90 degrees Celsius. This isn't terrible. The 6600H's TJ Maxx is already 95 degrees, which is the temperature where the CPU starts to throttle or decrease its clock speeds to shed heat. GMK Tech capped it at 90 degrees, so it would never hit that TJ Maxx and down throttle. This isn't necessarily bad. The performance curve levels out at the top of the thermal range of any CPU, so the performance gain between 90 and 95 degrees Celsius is negligible. However, the thermal cap ensures the CPU doesn't throttle, which avoids a noticeable performance dip. So while this isn't the best way to balance heat and performance, it does work and can result in better overall performance. Unfortunately, GMK Tech also had a very aggressive fan curve set in the firmware. The fan would immediately spin up to top speeds with no ramp up or down. It just went from basically silent to full throttle instantly. It was honestly the worst mini PC I'd ever reviewed in terms of fan noise. However, post update, GMK Tech fixed two things. Firstly, they removed the thermal limit and properly undervolted the CPU. Simply put, by default, the various voltages that feed the different parts of a CPU are set higher than is necessary to ensure stability. However, Higher voltages means more heat, which reduces performance. By reducing voltages to a level that reduces thermal load, but still ensures stability, you can actually improve a CPU's performance. This is exactly what GMK Tech seems to have done. For example, while the default SOC voltage of a Zen 3 CPU is about 1.2 volts, and prior to the update, the 6600H was hitting about 1.1 volts, after the update, the SOC voltage tops out at just 1.03 volts. This tiny adjustment may not produce huge gains in benchmark performance, but the slight reduction in heat allows the CPU and GPU cores to operate at top speeds for longer periods in single and multi-core bursty workloads like gaming, content creation, and productivity tasks. GMK Tech also significantly improved the fan curve. It'll still hit top speeds, which is loud, but there are many more steps between idle and full load, and they included long ramp up and down times, making the overall noise level of the fan much more bearable. Ultimately, all of this along with other cost-cutting decisions such as using an older yet very capable mid-tier CPU, opting for a simple plastic chassis over a more expensive aluminum alloy, using slower DDR5 JDAC memory, which is cheaper and actually faster than high-speed DDR4 Expo RAM, and choosing a high-capacity PCIe Gen 3 SSD over a pricier Gen 4 SSD, which offers no noticeable performance difference in real world tasks leads to a price to performance ratio that's nearly double that of the $800 A8. Not to mention, it outperforms and is cheaper than the previous generation top tier Ryzen mini PC and the mid tier Intel based Geekcom. Overall, this is the best price to performance mini PC I've ever reviewed. And to bring it back to the opener, I put together a parts list for the closest spec for spec custom PC, and I wouldn't be able to build that for under $382. My only real complaint about the Nookbox M6, now that the fan issue has been fixed, is the lack of instructions for and difficulty of assembly. Once you figure it out, it's not too hard, but FYI, to get to the internals, the top plastic panel is held on with clips and pulls off. Then there are four screws to remove the component fan panel, which is also clipped in on each side. 
Now, I should also add that my independent research suggests that GMK Tech is one of the most reputable mini PC manufacturers out there with no significant reports of product reliability problems and a solid track record for customer service and after sales support. So if you're looking for a desktop PC that doesn't take up any room on your desk is perfect for productivity tasks, web browsing, or media consumption. It can also handle some light to intermediate content creation and gaming. Then the GMK Tech Nookbox M6 is definitely worth checking out. You can find links with more info and current pricing in the description below. Don't forget to hit that like button and get subscribed for more tech reviews and DIY. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.